What's going on guys? I'm gonna walk you through TD Ameritrade's mobile app. Not only am I gonna show you a walkthrough of it, but now I'm gonna give you my personal review. Um, I've been using TD Ameritrade for the past three years, going on four years now. It's where most of my money is currently in. Uh, other platforms that I have used include Robinhood, Webull, Interactive Brokers, Trade Kings, Tastyworks. So I've gotten a taste for a bunch of different brokerage accounts and TD Ameritrade is definitely one that is highly ranked for me. I think it is a great platform to use, but let's jump right in to this walkthrough. All right guys, before we walk through the mobile app, make sure to like and subscribe. Drop comments if you have any questions throughout the video. Again, all of those likes really help boost the algorithm and dropping comments also helps boost that algorithm. So I appreciate that, but I'm going to grab my phone. We're going to hit screen record and boom, there you go. Now you can watch it. So this is TD Ameritrade. This is the mobile app. I think it is very user friendly, a lot more user friendly than on the computer. Uh, I really don't like using uh, TD Ameritrade desktop version. I don't think I've ever made a single trade on the desktop version. I've made all my trades through the mobile app, but this is it. So at the top, we have our balances. If you hit show balance history, uh, then you could actually see right here your portfolio balance going up over time and you can go all throughout different uh, time frames. You could compare it to different indices, which I think is really cool. So compare it to the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, or the Dow Jones index. The one thing that I don't like about that is, don't think I made 100% uh, by my stocks appreciating. This is not only factoring in your stocks appreciating, but it's factoring in the money that you're putting into the account. So if I were to drop $100,000 into the account, then it would you would see that shoot up and you would see my account would say, oh, now you're over 200%. So it's not just accounting for stock appreciation, it's also accounting for the money that you're putting into it. So I'm not doing that much better than the NASDAQ. I actually am right around the NASDAQ because a lot of my positions are big players in the NASDAQ. But if we go below, you could see all of these different stocks that I own and you can see the columns will show your day change, day gain, it's on the weekend, so right now nothing's happening. Uh, your dollar gain, your percentage gain, all of this good information. And what's really cool is you see this little gear, if you click on that, you can change that and you can add whatever you want into it. So I like seeing everything that I have that's already checked off, but there's more stuff that you can add to it if you wanna see that. So you could just keep scrolling on, you can see all of these different things that you could add in. If you have a lot of dividend stocks, maybe you want a lot of this dividend data. You want the dividend yield, you want the X dividend date, your dividend frequency, whatever it might be. Uh, then you have a lot of options data. So if you're a big options trader, you have all of this options data that you could add in as well. So you can see that right on your home screen. But let's hit back, let's scroll back up, so you see right here, it says table. So we're seeing our table version. We can click on compact and it will show this more compact version so I don't have to scroll back and forth. All the information is just kind of right there. Uh, allocation, so a little pie chart that shows the allocation of all of my stocks. You can see PayPal is my biggest allocation. We got a sector breakdown. So you can see all the sectors I'm in and then type. Most of it is in domestic equities, and then one of them is international equities. So I really like that, how it shows the breakdown of everything. Um, and this is all with the new update in 2021 to show all of these nice little pie charts, which I really appreciate. But guys, there's also another feature that I think is very important that a lot of you will like. Click on those three dots, you go to settings, you go to dark theme, hit apply, boom, we got a dark theme now, which is very cool, looks a lot better, easier on the eyes, especially when you're up all night staring at your portfolio, thinking about what your next move is for the day, so it's not super bright when you're laying in bed. But uh, let's jump over, so that was our dashboard. We're now gonna jump over to watch list. 
So you can add stuff to the watch list if you want. See, I really don't have anything on my watch list, but at the very bottom, you have that little plus button. If you hit that, let's, uh, sure, let's add Amazon. Boom, there's Amazon. It's now added to my watch list. Hit the plus button, let's search for Target. Add that, it's on the watch list now. And then on top of that, we can remove stuff from the watch list. Uh, we can see edit watch list, copy watch list, create another watch list. So if you have multiple watch lists that you want to look, uh, look at, if we hit on the settings button, switch to standard column or column editor, that's gonna be the same thing that we saw on the dashboard. So depending on what you want to see on your watch list, you can just check that off. And guys, these little bars off to the uh, for off to the left for you guys, we can move these around. So whatever you want to see, say for some reason I want to see bid first, I can move that to the top. And then there we go, bid is going to be the first thing I see. So you can change that around and see exactly what you want to on the watch list. But let's jump over to markets. This is just kind of a breakthrough of all of the different markets. So Dow Jones, S&P 500, your NASDAQ, scroll down your top to bottom sectors. So you can kind of see what's going on there. And then you click on accounts. This is going to be all of the important stuff, your account value, your balances. We'll click on balances, kind of show you the breakdown. We got your total cash, your total positions your margin available. So this is all stuff that you might want to look into uh, to see what you have, especially if you're day trading, trading options or buying on margin. Here's some important stuff. You need to know which tab it's in. Here it is. Positions jumps to that. Orders. So if you had any orders, you can see my two most recent orders. Uh, history. So this is very cool. This shows you every single thing you've done in your account. So you can see all the stocks I've bought or sold or cash that I've put into. Any dividends, so you can see right there, qualified dividends. It will show you that as well. So the history tab is very important and you could filter through it. So say I wanna see all of the deposits I made. So you can see all the deposits I made there. Let's say I wanna see all the dividends I've been paid. Here's all of my dividends. So you can filter through that very easily. The last tab is documents. So that's where your statements and your tax documents will be for your accountant. It's all right there. We'll go back to balances. Actually, we'll go back to the dashboard. Okay, right, guys, now the last thing is obviously looking at stock quotes. So let's look at one of the stocks that I own. How about we'll go to Visa. So you can see right here, here's Visa, how much I own, what my market value is. If I want to add or reduce position, so let's say I want to add to the position. I click on that and then I could buy from it now, right? So I can have my action buy. I could change the limit to whatever I want. So say I do a buy limit, however many shares I want, what price I want to put in for, and then expiration. I actually had someone ask me what expiration is. It's a really important thing you need to know about. So expiration means how long is this order going to stay out? How long are you going to keep it open for? just the day or GTC, which stands for good till cancel. So what that means is say, I don't want to buy Visa unless it drops below $200. So I put in a buy limit for $200, good till cancel. That means when the market opens tomorrow, say Visa opens at 205, I'm not going to buy it or the order's not going to go through until it drops down to 200. So say it takes two weeks and finally drops down to 200, then my order will go through. Say it never drops down to 200 and I end up canceling the order. That's what good to cancel mean. Day expiration just means if it doesn't fill in that one day, they're just gonna cancel the order for you. So now you know the difference between that. You hit review order, so say I wanted to buy one share. You hit review order and then you kind of see what's going on. Do I have the cash available? Yes, the estimated total is gonna be $202. And then if I hit place order, which I will, you gotta, put in your password or whatever. So for me, biometrics. And now the order is placed and you can see it says open. So it is open right now. So when the market opens tomorrow, it's gonna try to buy that at 202. Say I didn't wanna do that. That's easy. Click on that right there. Cancel order or edit order. Maybe you wanna add shares. Maybe you wanna reduce the price. So we're gonna cancel order. Hit okay. Order's now canceled. Very, very user-friendly. Very easy to do that. 
Last thing I want to show you guys, we'll go back to Visa, is the detailed quote. So if we click on detailed quote, this will kind of give you all of the information you want to see about this company. You see the price, you can see your ask and bid. Drop this down, we could see, so there's no chart for one day right now because the market's closed. There would be a chart if the market was open right now. We got our market data as well, so we can see the exchange it's on, where it is between its 52 week low and high, open previous close, average data, uh, average volume, your dividend, when it gets paid, which is quarterly, how much per share, all of the fundamentals, this is the fun stuff. You got your beta, your PE, market cap, drop down to earnings. You can see if you click on detailed quote, it shows you all of this, that's the overview. You can go into chart, here's chart. So you can see one year, five years, six months, news. Here's all the news that uh, maybe mentions Visa or is related to Visa. You got ratings as well, so you can see where everyone is rating the company. Level two, uh, level two the market's closed, so it's not gonna be anything. Then you got your options as well. So if you wanted to trade options, you could do it right in the app as well. And it's all right here, so you could pick you know, where you want it, so say 33 days to expiration, you wanna be in the money, out of the money, you just click on it, and there you go, it sets that option up for you, so then you could buy it. You'll hit trade. Yep, so there you go. You, you, how many contracts I want, at what strike price, it's all right there. So it's very simple, but let's go back to our dashboard. Uh, and then if you scroll down, you have some position news. This will just show all the news happening in your positions. Uh, and then just some other fun stuff like that. But guys, that is TD Ameritrade's mobile app. I would give it five I'd give it four and a half stars. Four and a half out of five stars. I love the app. I think it's very advanced. It has great technology. It's very simple to place trades, cancel trades, to monitor all your money. The only reason why I don't give it five out of five stars is it is known to glitch. Sometimes when there's a lot of trading volume, it will get glitchy and it drives me crazy. Doesn't happen often. Maybe it'll happen a couple times a year. But I would, even though I'm a passive trader, I'm very active as I'm always looking at my positions. So it gets very frustrating when I can't log on. Um, but that's probably the only downside I have. Otherwise, I really love the app. I do not like the desktop version at all. I never use it. I only use the mobile version. I've been using it for over three years now. Highly recommend it if you're looking to open up a TD Ameritrade brokerage account. They don't sponsor me in any way, shape, or form, so you know this is my honest opinion. Guys, I hope you like this video. Again, smash that like button, comment. Let me know what brokerage account you use and what you think is the best of the best. As always, I will see you in the next one.